Welcome to the third week of the Business Management Capstone course. First of all, I'd like to thank each team for meeting with me within the last past two weeks. There were great sessions, um, uh, excellent questions. Uh, hopefully I was able to answer all of them. If I was not, as always, feel free to reach out to me. Okay, so as you can see on the screen, we have the announcements for week three, which covers what assignments you should be working on. But instead of starting here, I like to go through the weekly modules just to make sure everyone is actually accessing the weekly modules. So I'm going to go ahead and click on weekly modules. I'm just going to go ahead and click on the week three, chapter one link. Okay, the format for the module should always be the same. We start out with the learning objectives that you want to review. Then you're going to want to scroll down and look at the assignment summary. Obviously, you're watching the week three overview video right now. For this week, for the module review, you want to read chapter one, review the PowerPoint presentation for chapter one, and of course, review LearnSmart documentation if you have never used LearnSmart before. I'm assuming probably most of you, if not all of you, have though. And then you get down to the assignments. The course participation, which is a discussion board for a competitive advantage. Then the chapter one LearnSmart that you must complete. The decisions for the practice year seven within Globus which you should be familiar since you already completed the practice year six uh, last week. And then there's a quiz on chapter one. Next, we have the module three course content. Uh, please make sure you review this information. So if I go ahead and click on it. So here's where you can access the PowerPoint. There's also a link on the left hand side to get to it also. Here's the biggest one I want to really make sure I point out this week is key financial ratios, how to calculate them, and what they mean. I've seen a lot of questions on the discussion board relating to how items are calculated. So this information should really assist you. So if you simply just click on where it says click here to open the, or save the document. And this gives you topics such as gross profit margin, net profit, total return on assets, so on and so forth. So definitely spend some time with this document and make sure you understand it. As always, if you ever have any questions, please reach out to me or your team members. That's why you have a team. Let me go ahead and jump back to Blackboard. So what we also have within the content folder is information about LearnSmart if you haven't used it before and very straightforward. And the same global simulation information that you should have already reviewed by now, but I posted there just to make sure that it's catching your attention if you have not. Keep in mind, we already spent two weeks on Globus, so you should at least have a general understanding of the simulation. I'm going to go ahead and go back to the week three module. Next, we have the course participation competitive advantage assignment. So basically, you're going to choose one of these companies within step one. And I may actually add companies. So if it looks a little bit different after this video, it's probably just where it's going to be a document that you open up to, to review all the companies. I'm just going back and forth about it, but uh, most likely I will because I want there to be more to choose from. Then you have uh, step two, you want to perform research on the chosen company, whichever one you pick. Okay, and then you have to answer the below questions. You know, how does the company set itself apart from its competitors? Does it compete on price, quality, service, or innovation? How does the company communicate these competitive advantages to customers? And then the last step is step three. Once you have created your initial post, you must make a comment on at least two other posts. And when I'm saying comment, I don't want to just see great job, good point. You know, I, I want to see some substance to your comment. Do you agree? Do, do you disagree? Why is that? I just don't want to see, hey, great job, and, and that's it. Okay, moving on, you have your Learn Smart. Simply just click on the link, and it should open up where you're going to read a textbook. As you're reading, you're going to be asked questions for you to respond to. Next, we have the Chapter 1 quiz. should be very straightforward. And last but not least is the practice round year seven within Globus. Like I said, this should be very familiar to you. You already completed year six. You got to spend two weeks on it. So this is going to year seven. I've had a lot of um, questions within the discussion board from last week about the decisions and how they are graded. And this is how it is. Okay. So if your team makes decisions, Say all, everyone on your team makes decisions within Globus. Okay, you could do it together, you can do it individually, but you're making decisions. And you're doing well, maybe you're not top of the pack, 
but I can see that the decisions you are making are having an impact. You're moving forward. You will always get 100%. Now, if I can see your decisions make no sense and you're going in the reverse direction as everyone else, your team will receive a zero. Now, if you're wondering if, what if you have a team of three, two people are making decisions, one person isn't re even responding to emails, let alone communicating in any form, then please just notify me. The two team members who are making the decisions will receive credit. The other one will not. It's that simple. That's on me. Don't ever stress about another team member. If you tried working with them and they won't have it, then just communicate to me and, and I'll take it from there. With that said, I do hope all teams will work together. Uh, like I said, in the past, only one team last semester, I, I truly had issues the entire semester. For the most part, after a few weeks, everyone uh, was able to get on the same page. So. All right, moving on. So I went through the different assignments for this week. Uh, if you notice on the left-hand side, under the weekly modules, you have a link to the discussion board, Globus information, Learn Smart, the quizzes, and cases. Okay, well, we don't have a case assigned yet. That's coming, though. These are just a quick link so you don't have to dig through the weekly module to get to the assignment. With that said, I do hope you do go through the weekly module first to make sure you, you touch on the learning objectives, the assignment summary, the, the, the course content for that module, so on and so forth. Um, after that, then, by all means, use those quick links to save you time. Uh, that's what they're there for. So now let's go ahead and jump into Globus. Okay, now I have Globus open. The biggest mistake that most teams make is they get comfortable with the decisions, but what they do not do is review the reports. Notice at the top, it says decisions and reports menu. So the very first part is the decisions. Everyone made decisions last week, great job. And you didn't really have much to look at yet. Now you do. So if I scroll down here, now I can camera and drone journal. Here's the information you should be looking at. So each team has access to this. If I click on scoreboard, here's where you will see the standings for year six. Now, if at first glance you don't know what these numbers mean, you can simply click the help feature top right and review the PDF document, or you can scroll at the bottom of the screen and it'll explain what investor expectation score is, best in industry score, and weighted average score. So please take a moment to make sure you understand these concepts, or if not, the numbers themselves won't have any meaning to them. So let me go ahead and scroll back up top here. The year, year six scoreboard. Number one, Company D at 106. Got a decent lead for the first year. Uh, seven points. It's not bad at all. You have Company E at number two at 99. Company B at 91. Uh, company C at 85, doing fantastic, so on and so forth. And if I'm looking down the list, initially I, I don't have any concerns because it, there's going to be a gap based on everyone's strategy, except when I looked all the way down to the bottom and company G and I. G's at 26 and I's at 19. Not panicking too much yet because this was practice year 6. And depending on their strategy, maybe they'll make a big leap uh, on year seven um, now it's only two years so it's hard to jump too much so it'll be interesting to see where they go after year six and here in a moment i'll kind of review a little bit of everyone's strategy but not too much so i don't want to give it give it away so next let's go ahead and jump to page two which is earnings per share return on uh, equity and stock price so we'll come over here click on the link so earnings per share Instantly, what jumps out at you is Company D, which they are highlighted and bolded at uh, $2.10. Of course, Company D was the team that's leading. Now, you may say, well, why is B and E also bolded? Well, that means they have met investor expectations. So, just because they're not number one may not be a big deal in the grand scheme of the, the um, overall scoring. So, just keep that in mind. You don't have to be a number one in each and every category. So B's 133, even C's 116, E's 161. Concern would be G minus 57, and I's 1. Um, 
A69, uh, not too bad. So that I probably could live with that uh, this week. So, like I said, though, I don't want to pick on GNI too much because based on their strategy, who knows what's going to happen in year seven. This is only one year. So, moving down to return on equity. Same concept. Whichever one is highlighted is number one. So, D again, which is the true number one team. Great job. Great job, Team D. Okay. Then we have Team E at 24, B at 21, and C at 18. That's all meeting expectations. That's why they're bolded. And then if I do a quick glance, which ones would I be concerned about? Again, G, negative 10.5. Yeah, I'd be, I'm getting concerned because it seems like there's a trend here. But like I said, I'm going to hold back those concerns and wait till the next year. Okay. And H is at 14. That's fine. And I, 0.2. They're not negative, but they're not very positive. So, again, let's see what happens. Moving on down to stock price. D, company D again is leading charge. Company D, I, I can give it to you. Uh, fantastic. You you leaped out very quickly early on. Uh, don't get comfortable with the lead. I have met with every single team, and I can tell you every sing, single team is capable of catching you if they uh, do the work. Uh, but great job. I have, have to give it to you for the first uh, year six practice year. And then we have uh, company E, 46. That's nothing to sneeze at either. That's great. And then you have 32 for B, 25 for C. Now here, I don't have any major concerns because everyone at least has a decent stock price. The lowest one is 5.76. Would be would it be nice to be higher? Yeah, but it's not that bad. I've seen worse through these simulations. So stock price-wise, everyone's at least in the game. So let's go ahead and move to page three, the credit rating, image rating. So credit rating. This is one that I tell students don't stress out too much. The credit rating t uh, tends to work itself out. Um, now the teams that are C minus, I'm a little, little concerned, but not, not too much though, because let's see what happens to year seven. But normally students end up with A plus, A, A minus, B plus at the worst usually. So, um, I wouldn't let the credit rating kind of get in your way of trying something different, I guess is what I'm getting at. I think you're going to be okay in the long run. Next, we have image rating. Now, look at this. I've been saying D, 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 D. But look who I'm going to say, G. Okay, G has the best image rating. G is the company I've been picking on this whole entire time. But they had the best best image rating. So as you can see, what I said early on, you have you don't have to be the best to be number one, which D clearly isn't the best in every category. They're not the best in image rating. They're actually 75. There's other teams ahead of them. E is 82. Of course, G is 84. So they're like third in, in, in image rating. Or actually, no, I'm, I take that back. Uh, A is 77 and C is 76. So they're what, fifth or so? But it just goes to show you, you don't have to be number one. So what this should trigger something in you, though, to say, oh, G was so bad, but how in the world did it have such a great image rating? Well, if you know what it takes to get a good image rating, you probably know what to look for already and to find out why they have such a good image rating. But then now you're going to have to balance that with, well, as you can see, every team is bolded, meaning they met expectations except one team which is team i which did not do bad it's 54 so just keep that in mind when we start digging through the reports here all right moving on now i'm going to go to the competitive intelligence report um, i'm only going to cover one of them i'll let you dig through the rest of them so i'm going to cover the very first one in the list here okay now at the very top you can actually choose the different regions i'm just going to stick with north america I'm not going to give everyone's strategy away for every region, um, and I'm really not going to give it away for this, or I'm just going to give you a few pointers, and that's it, okay? Um, I, I don't really want to focus on one team because I don't think that's fair. Okay, top line, price. As you can see, if you quickly glance, and, and, and I didn't look at it prior to this video because I'd like to be surprised. So if I quickly glance, I'm going to say, okay, it looks like everyone's around 250. But if you look at the far right hand, where it's like in a light shade of pink, that actually is the average. 
And you say, well, Professor Hensley, you were dead wrong. The average is 338. And I'm like, okay, yeah, I, I was. But then I just noticed company eyes at 975 for pricing. So look at the huge difference. So company I was getting crushed in every category except image trading. And look at the price. Now, I'm not going to tell you that their price is wrong. So I don't know. Maybe they're going to go high end. I would have to dig deeper to understand if their price is wrong or not. Because if I drop down to the next line, the PQ rating, the average is 4.9. If I look all the way to the right-hand side, it clearly says average is 4.9. But company I has 7.5. So in my mind, they're, they're trying to sell a better product. Okay, Does that justify the $975 cost? I mean, initially you want to say no because you know, of their rating um, or their standings in, in the rankings. But I'm not, I, I still can't say yes or no until I dig deeper and to see what they're really up to. Like I said, one year does not tell the whole entire story. You see the brand reputation, everyone's got 70. You see number of models. This is different. Everyone has more than one except one team. And that team is company I. So maybe they're just tr trying to create themselves a niche. Not for sure. Never asked them their strategy. So that's why I don't want to get down on any certain company yet because I don't even know. Even be honest with you, even with another practice round, practice year seven, that's still not enough for me to make a true judgment call if you know what you're doing or not. So that's why I'm not being too harsh on the, the teams because I'm not for sure. Once we get into the year or the true year six, then again, it's going to take a few years. I'm probably like eight year nine then i could see a trend by then like okay are you making up ground do you have a strategy or you're you just really have no clue you're trying to sell a drone for three thousand dollars and everyone's selling for 200 so um so that that's why you know kind of giving me a lot of leeway right now yeah. other items you i could kind of point out here would be like uh retail support you see company d that's leading the charge there at a nine and company B's at a nine, uh, 9.36. And then company I is at 34. Okay, let me say it again. 34. So their strategy is heavy on retail support. Is that the right strategy? Can't tell really about yet by now. All I know is at this point in time, company D, D is crushing it. So, okay. Advertising budget. Everybody's pretty much about the same, give or take. Uh, website displays. Now, there's a difference there. Company I, it's only 500. So, these are all the items you really want to take a look at. Then, I'm just going to go ahead and jump down to uh, warranty pe period. Everyone's at basically 60 and 90 except one company, which is Company I. They're at 360. So, initially, you would think I'd say something bad about them, but I would not because if they truly have a strategy for the high end market, you would want to offer the best warranty. You would have the best image rating or PQ rating. I mean, so we got we have, we have to wait and see. Uh, market share, and you would think instantly the market share would go to Company D because they're leading the charge, but it's not. The market share is actually going to Company E. Okay, so then you would say to yourself, why? Well, why isn't Company E winning then? If they have the largest market share. Well, you have to dig deeper. Just because they have the largest market share, do, are they making the most amount of profit? If company A is selling profit for a dollar, and I know I could sell for a dollar twenty-five, I won't sell as many, but I'll still sell some. Well, I, I can make almost just as much money and sell less. So you, you just got to dig deep into these reports to figure all this out. Okay, now moving. Then that was the camera section. Moving on to the drone segment. Let's take a quick glance. It looks like the average is about $1,300 for the drones. Uh, company I is at $2,100. Not too bad, like I said. Let's see if they're going high end. PQ rating, we do have one at 5.4 uh, and Company I at 5.4. So they're not really unique now. So now we have to look at what else is going on. So there's discount to online retailers. So everyone is roughly around the 13% mark, give or take, on average. Except company I, they're at eight. Maybe that's their strategy again. Maybe they're going high end and they don't care. They, they don't want to be known as that discount shop. Which, as you know, as just a consumer, sometimes 
you might buy something just for the name brand and and that name brand may never go on sale but it's just it's a it's a brand and that's why you buy it. even though you could go to the walmart and buy the exact same item um it just doesn't have a i don't know polo logo to it now just so you don't make fun of me if you ever see me wear a polo shirt because i do wear polo shirts is i go to the outlets i wait till they're on sale usually the last sale i hit it was 50 percent off and then with another additional 30 percent off so yeah i like their clothes too but at a discount at the outlets that's about it i'm not going to give give away my money okay next we can look at the brand reputation everyone's at 70 number of models everyone's pretty much on average at two except c's at one Every much, every, everyone pretty much has the same. Online retailers, 36. Website displays, everyone's pretty much the same except I at 500. Search engine, 250 for I. That's different from the rest of the group. So that's something they may want to look at. Retail recruitment. Look at this big difference. Okay. Everyone's hovering, I don't know, let's see, uh, around 90 or something. Because company i really throws off the average they have a thousand okay so maybe that's a strategy maybe we'll pay off in the long run not for sure okay and then we jump all the way back down to the market share and it looks like to me there's a tie between b and g at 12.7 and 12.8 more or less they're very close so but everyone's not far behind. You see 11%, 10%. So as you can see, it's a really a tight game. The scoreboard overall doesn't really show you how close it really is. So that's why I tell you, don't get comfortable with your lead. You know, go all out. Especially, this is going to be practice year seven you're working on. There's no harm of just trying something that maybe you wouldn't try once we truly get started with the true year seven. Okay. As always, please reach out if you have any questions for me. You already met me online, so you know we can meet online. You can give me a call. You can shoot me an email. It doesn't matter to me. Um, I just want to make sure I'm keeping all the groups running and that there's no major issues. With that said, as I always state, please try with your team first before reaching out to me. And make sure you document because if you come to me and say blah, 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 blah about team member A, and I would say, well, can you prove it? And you can't then I'll say, well, I'm not for sure what to do here, okay? And when I'm saying document, it doesn't have to be a dissertation. It doesn't have to be a report. I'm just meaning that maybe it's a group chat that everyone's in and that person's in, and, but they never respond. Or It could be an email chain. It could be any of those. Hopefully, it does come to that point, though. All right, everyone have a great week. Take care.